My pimento cheese stuffed burger on a toasted brioche bun stacked high with a fried heirloom tomato, homemade ranch dressing, crispy bacon, and a cabbage slaw. The key to great pimento cheese is starting off with great cheese. So I've got some cheddar here, about half and half. The white and yellow cheddar looks good. Now we'll get in with the pimentos. Now, you can make your own pimentos. You can buy your pimentos. You can add as many as you want. I'm going to go with maybe a half a cup. Got just some salt, pepper, a little bit of cayenne. Again, this is kind of where you want to go with it. Cream cheese, a little mayo, and a little Dijon. It's just going to pulse it, bring it together, scooping this out. Just getting a roll on it. Give it a little twist. Right like that. Voila. Okay. Take this, lay it down in the fridge. Little dill. Let's get into this. Little buttermilk. Some sour cream. Little mayo. Now, before I bring in the spices, let me grab a little bit of sugar. Kind of a little bit of that sweet. Okay. Offsetting some of the big spices that are coming in right now. Okay. Let's start off with a little garlic, a little onion powder, and some smoked paprika. Let me get a touch of some salt and some black pepper. Now, a little cayenne, just a touch of heat. There we go, okay? Now, this is the real kicker. This is what makes everything that you love about ranch dressing really comes from this, and that's the dill. About three tablespoons. There we go. Give it a little whisk. That's exactly what we're looking for. Seeing that nice, beautiful green just studded throughout that. All right, let me cover this up real quick. Okay, this goes down in the fridge. So here's the next piece. We're gonna talk about green tomatoes, fried green tomatoes. It's something you see in the South everywhere you go but I couldn't find any green ones. So, well, I just went with a really nice, firm heirloom tomato. But nonetheless, it's gonna be fantastic. So putting it into a dredge here, uh, first start off with a little flour with a little granulated garlic, then went into a little buttermilk and egg with a little salt and pepper, and then some fine cornmeal here with a little salt and pepper. Set this aside, just gonna get... Put that down, unwrap it. So what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna make four burgers, but eight patties. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut that in half, dividing that equally into four, okay? Now I'll just divide this one, that one. Now everybody's got kind of an equal amount, right? Here's what we do. Take the patty, not pressing it too hard. Nice patty, firm edges. Doing this ahead of time. See this little move that I'm doing here with my thumb? Check this out. So I take the patty, and then I'm bringing my thumb in to really establish the edge. So I'm not having this little flimsy edge where it's kind of just tapering off. And the, those are the ones when you cook them and they just kind of end up falling into the fire. Okay. Here we go. So there's one done. Here we go, we'll grab some of the pimento cheese, drop it right in the center. Now, bringing the other one over, right on top, mirroring it. Gonna give it a little pinch, bring in the meat together, and then back to that same little technique that I just did, where I'm gonna come and establish the edge again. So really brought them together, really formed them together, kind of pushed it, and then straight across. It's even in the middle, drop the burger. Now, normally when you've seen Guy's Big Bite, I'm pressing burgers. You go to Guy's Burger Joint on Carnival Cruise Line, I'm pressing burgers. You go to Guy's Vegas, I'm pressing burgers. But when it comes to a stuffed burger, we're gonna treat it nice and delicate so we don't break it open so we don't lose all the surprise inside. Not overcrowding it. Four would be the max I'd wanna do. Simply just a little bit of salt. And then when I flip it, I'll season the other side. Now we'll go ahead. There we go, those are the bubbles that I'm looking for. Again, don't crowd it. You're gonna drop that oil temperature. Now we're gonna talk about the buns. Nice brioche bun. Everybody's so conscious about eating all those carbs and eating the bread and so forth. I'll tell you what, when you're gonna do it, do it right. Now I've got some roasted garlic butter here. Just gonna brush that on. Now let's talk about bacon. So here's the method. Take the bacon, 
and just shingle it a little bit, okay? And we're gonna go from a cold pan, cold bacon, throw it in the oven, and we're gonna get those nice, uniform, evenly cooked pieces of bacon that we love that we find in restaurants. Okay, so this goes, lay it down. So here's the game plan. Take this, pop it in the oven, should be about 350. It'll give us beautiful bacon. And this, just as a little homage to my mom in North Carolina, that's where she was raised. Make a quick little slaw here, some nice vinegar. Just wilt this thinly sliced cabbage down. If I tried to sit here and cook this on the, on the stove top, by the time I cooked all the way through, I would have a quarter inch on both sides of just crunchy beef. The idea to cook it all the way through to really get that great flavor, we want to go ahead and finish it in the oven. So I finished it in the wood fire oven, finish it in your oven at 350. Either way, you're good to go. So we'll build a burger, little thin sliced onion on the bottom. Now, it's leaking a little bit of the pimento cheese. Fantastic, it shows you it's done. But this looks like mine right here. Lay that up on top. A little unripe heirloom tomatoes. That goes on top. Let's get some of the ranch dressing. Bottom on top of that. Nice pieces of bacon, we'll throw that up on top. A little bit of that quick pickled slaw that I did. Look at that thing, huh? All right, let's cut into this thing and take, take a look at it. Nice brioche bun going right through. Come, that's not the cover of a magazine. Here we go. There's so many textures, so much flavor. The juiciness of that burger, this is the kind of burger you want to cook at home. 